welcome to the lecture on statistical measures. So, uh, we will try to be conversant with uh, many of the statistical parameters, many of the statistical terms which are used when uh, we study the uh, financial mathematics and uh, uh, most of them are related to like uh, finding the mean average, mean or average, then you have standard deviation variance. Then we also find uh, certain terminologies like uh, covariance, correlation. So, all this, uh, so we will discuss. Uh, first of all, we will have uh, some understanding about the basic combinatorics, and uh, in that, uh, basically, uh, when we talk about the basic combinatorics, uh, it, it, it basically talks about the uh, fundamental rules, uh, mathematical rules and concepts of uh, counting and reordering and, and ordering. So, basically there are many times uh, you have to order, you have to do the arrangement. So, uh, what are the different uh, rules, fundamental rules uh, for that? So, that we will try to uh, be acquainted with. Then uh, we will talk about the permutation and combination. So, you must have the idea about the permutation and combination. So, you in the permutation how you end. <coughs> you have to arrange. Then in combination how you are making that uh, group. So, uh, you know uh, there are certain uh, rules by for having the permutation and combinations. Uh, we will also have uh, some idea about the uh, probability and uh, then we will discuss about these uh, statistical terminologies like uh, finding the expected value or that is also known as mean. Then finding the variance. So, how the variance is uh, calculated, how there is variability among the data. So, you how that uh, is calculated that is quantified. Then there is a standard term known as standard deviation. So, that also we will know that how to uh, find or calculate this uh, standard deviation. Then uh, we will try to have uh, the idea about the covariance, covariance is further. Uh, we calculate uh, you know, you know uh, depending upon certain expression we find the covariance and uh, then finding the correlation from there basically it will talk about the uh, you know how the two random variables how they are going to behave if one is increasing whether second is also increasing or if one is decreasing how the second is behaving. So, depending upon that uh, so depending upon this correlation and correlation coefficient you can predict that uh, how these two are behaving. Uh, then we will also discuss about uh, the normal distribution because it will have the use of uh, you know uh, the mean value then standard deviation values and all that. So, all these uh, terminologies we will try to be acquainted uh, with. So, uh, coming to the um, you know basic uh, combinatorics uh, uh, rules uh, where the, we are uh, trying to get familiarized with uh, basic rules. So, as we know that uh, there is a n factorial rule. So, you have uh, uh, the n factorial rule. Now, in this case uh, uh, what we de do is that if suppose you have um, you know n objects and uh, you want to you know order. So, how in how many way you can order them. So, that time you use that n factorial rule. So, you, you have uh, n factorial value is calculated. So, this is n factorial in. So, they how can they be ordered um, you know. So, that is uh, uh, n factorial suppose you have two objects. So, they can be uh, uh, you know ordered in two way. So, uh, a b and b a. Similarly, if you have uh, three objects. So, so that way you, how can you you know uh, uh, order them. So, a b c. So, you have a b c a c b. Similarly, B uh, will be there at its own place A C and C A. Similarly, C will be at its own place A B and B A. So, that way you will have 6 uh, type of uh, you know uh, uh, ordering is uh, um, possible and that is why uh, when you have n objects uh, taking all at a time. So, if you want to uh, find the total number of ways in which uh, they can be ordered. So, that will be your n factorial. So, n factorial will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and it will go up to uh, till it comes as the 1. 
So, that way uh, you find this, this is known as n factorial rule. Similarly, you have the m n rule. So, if you if suppose uh, you, you have uh, m elements uh, uh, and n elements, uh, so the total uh, you know uh, you can form total of groups that is uh, m n. So, if suppose A has uh, m elements, so A 1, A 2 and A m. Similarly, if you have B as uh, B 1, B 2 up to B n. So, in that case uh, you can have if you have to have a group you can have a total of so a1 b1 a1 b2 a1 b3 a1 bn similarly a2 b1 so that way you can have total of uh, n elements uh, that can be you know form a total of n you know uh, groups and that will be that will be equal to m into n so this is known as m by uh, n rules or mn rule so uh, so this way uh, we try to see that uh, how these uh, you know uh, uh, rules are being applied uh, in those cases and uh, uh, this will be used uh, many a times you have uh, also to use your own you know judgment suppose uh, you have uh, two stations and uh, uh, in between uh, people have to stop they have to stop at one place second place or so or uh, take the uh, you know uh, example that uh, you have uh, you know uh, go from one station to another station and uh, uh, you have uh, uh, you know uh, uh, so that way uh, you have to exclude the, your own station so that way uh, you have to uh, go and then you have to uh, come back so in those cases if you have to find in how many ways uh, you know suppose you have to go from station uh, 1 to uh, station 2 and uh, uh, you have 6 trains. So, uh, example is like uh, you have uh, 6 trains which can uh, go back and forth uh, between 2 stations. Now, the thing is that if you put the conditions like uh, you are going from uh, one station to second station and you have uh, uh, 6 trains and the condition is that uh, uh, when you are going from uh, uh, one uh, by one train you have not to come back by that same train. So, how many in how many ways uh, you, you can do that. So, you can uh, go by 6 way, but you can come by only 5 way. So, that way it will uh, you will have uh, 6 into 5 and that comes out to be equal to 30. So, that way uh, you can have uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, what way in, in how many ways you can come back so that will be 6 into 5 that is uh, 30. Then uh, you know uh, comes uh, another term that is uh, uh, that will be used will be the permutation and uh, uh, as we know that uh, uh, permutation is uh, uh, presented by NPR. So, when we talk about uh, you know uh, arranging or ordering elements, so, so it is a way of arranging and ordering elements. So, uh, you know uh, it is uh, basically defined as uh, the number of ways by which you can order or arrange them taken uh, r at a time. So, in that case it will be n p r. So, you have out of total n elements and you have to uh, have r at a time and you have to uh, arrange and order. So, you how many uh, you know ways you can make them and, and this is known as n p r and, and this is uh, as we know you must have studied about all this and this is uh, defined as uh, factorial n divided by factorial n minus r or, or you, you uh, factorial is also defined as uh, this. So, this is known as uh, the permutation then uh, uh, you must have the uh, idea about the uh, combination and as you know that uh, you have uh, in, in case of combination uh, it is way of uh, you know again the, here you have the uh, you know you have to see again this is also the way of uh, arranging and ordering elements and uh, here it is defined as NCR and this will be n factorial 
by uh, r factorial and then n minus r factorial. So, that is known as uh, uh, combination uh, you know formula and this is uh, n c r. Now, in this case uh, what is there in this case uh, the difference as you know that uh, a b and b a uh, will be uh, taken as different one in the case of permutation, but they will be taken as the same in the case of uh, combination. So, that is why the in, the in the case of combination you get uh, the values n c r as factorial n upon factorial r into factorial uh, you know n minus r. So, that way uh, we uh, calculate these uh, values of the uh, permutation and uh, combination. So, suppose uh, uh, you are given certain uh, suppose uh, a number of people and among them you have to make a five member committee. So, in, in that case uh, in what how many ways you have to make the committee because suppose you have to make a committee of uh, you know. So, you have to a b c d e f g h i and j and out of, out of that you have to make a five member committee in how many ways you can uh, make that committee. So, in that case permutation will not work because either it will be a b c or a, a c b or, or a b c d e and b c d e a. So, it will be same. So, that is why uh, we uh, call it the same combination. So, it will not be the different combination. So, that way uh, you can have 10 c 5 it will be factorial 10 by factorial 5 factorial 5. So, that way we calculate these uh, you know permutation and combination values. Uh, next is uh, about the probability. Now, uh, as we know that uh, you know it is the measure of uncertainty and uh, it is estimation of the likelihood or chance that an uncertain event will occur. So, uh, you know uh, you can say if, uh, uh, if you toss a coin and uh, you have to tell that what is the probability of getting a head certainly you can say that uh, I mean either it will be head or a tail, uh, tail so, so probability is 50 percent. Uh, so, uh, depending upon uh, that when it is not uncertain now depending upon the total outcomes and uh, what outcome you desire to have you can always predict the um, probability and uh, probability is basically uh, the number of favorable uh, you know chances uh, uh, number of times it is favorable divided by total you know outcome which is uh, you know the total uh, number of outcomes which is there. So, the ratio of that is known as probability. We all know that uh, the probability value is uh, uh, lying from 0 to 1. So, it will be lying between 0 and 1 and uh, uh, there are many axioms to this uh, probability theory and uh, uh, when uh, an event uh, is uh, uh, certain to happen then we say that it is when which is completely 100 percent certain then we say that probability is 1 and if it is not at all certain then it is 0. So, if there is a likelihood of having it uh, you know and we do not know whether it is 0 or 100 in that case its value will be between 0 and 100 or 0 and 1 100 percent we talk about. So, it will be either 0 or uh, 1. Then uh, uh, probability of uh, so if, if there are many event all the events are there are possibility of many event taking place then the so either of the event will take place suppose then probability of having all these events uh, all together if you sum them they have to come as uh, 1. So, that also uh, we know also probability you can define as the uh, relative frequency of events. that occur in a large number of trials. So, uh, this way we define uh, the probability and uh, if you have uh, mm, you know n trials you are taking the n trials of the experiment and uh, for an event E. Uh, you know which occurs f times. So, uh, in that case uh, probability of that event E you can have uh, defined as f by n and limit uh, that is uh, n tending towards infinity. 
that is how the probability is defined. The F is the number of uh, you know times the event uh, has occurred and when L will approach towards infinity then we can say that uh, this is the probability of that event E and uh, you know many a times the probability uh, uh, formula is can be simplified and we can uh, directly take it to be F by N. So, this is basically we are simplifying it and we define this probability as to be uh, you know uh, f by uh, n. So, that way uh, we define this uh, uh, probability and this probability as we know that when we talk about the different kind of events where uh, things are not certain then we uh, bring into uh, picture these probability aspects. Uh, many a times it will be used we can when we talk about the risk and uncertainty cases. In those cases if suppose you have many you know uh, firms and you have to give the tender uh, and which firm is to be given how that depends upon how they are you know uh, going to give you the profit. So, certainly and, and that also again depends upon many factors. So, in those cases you will have uh, certain values of the probabilities associated with all those options and that can be used. So, that uh, uh, that way this uh, probability comes into picture. You can also uh, I mean you must have the idea about these probability concepts for other cases like what will be the probability of having you know uh, a jack uh, you when you draw one card uh, and with the probability, the probability of having a jack you know so out of 52. So, based on that so uh, you can you can find these probabilities in that. Uh, sense. Uh, now, we will uh, discuss about uh, the you know uh, other statistical param uh, parameters and one of them is uh, the expected value. Or mean. So, uh, as we know that uh, we defined this uh, probability as the uh, uh, relative frequency. So, it means that uh, the when we talk about the probability distribution. So, it is basically the distribution of long term frequencies how many times uh, you know. Uh, uh, so, based on that uh, now. Uh, so, if you uh, uh, this uh, uh, probability distribution function if you look about if you try to find this uh, mean of the uh, probability distribution of a random variable. So, uh, uh, that will reflect the centrality of the distribution. So, uh, uh, that basically is known as the expected value or the uh, mean value. So, the we call it as uh, so uh, you know uh, for a random variable now uh, this uh, uh, expected value I mean if you do the you know uh, the, the value which you are expected to occur. So, that is uh, what is uh, the expected uh, value because any value which you are getting it has certain probability associated with it. So, now when you find these expected value of any random variable. So, it is nothing but uh, you for you know and trials. Now, uh, for this uh, you are getting any value which has certain probability associated. So, uh, this uh, value basically uh, will give you uh, this mean value and that is why it is known as the uh, expected value or mean. So, uh, you know uh, that basically we will be talking about the you know weighted average and uh, uh, it is uh, um, it will be representing the mean of that uh, distribution. So, uh, this uh, mean value uh, will be when we talk about the different type of uh, probability distribution uh, functions then uh, your mean has to be defined and depends upon the you know type of that uh, distribution how it uh, comes out to be. And we will discuss a few uh, you know, a typical distribution curve that is normal distribution where it will be clear. Then uh, the next uh, term which is uh, coming further to our notice is the uh, variance. Now, uh, this variance uh, basically the variance and standard deviation these are the two very much uh, commonly used terms which are uh, used uh, 
when we analyze uh, these uh, financial uh, you know studies and uh, um, uh, it is basically it is the expected so uh, it is expected the square deviation so basically what is happening that uh, for every entity now uh, if you look at uh, um, the you know and the values which is there from x i so that value x i now in, in that uh, distribution you have x 1 to x n values. So, you will get certain mean of uh, it. Now, every mean has certain uh, you know uh, uh, deviation from uh, uh, you know that particular value. So, now this uh, so uh, it is a square term uh, that will be indicative of the variance. So, basically it is expected I mean uh, uh, square deviation. So, basically you are uh, taking the difference and you are making it a square uh, and uh, of the random variable. So, uh, you are finding the expected value or the mean value of the square deviation of the, the random variable and uh, that is basically uh, represented by the term sigma square and, and that is why you define the sigma square as uh, expected value of uh, you know x minus mu square. So, this is how uh, you uh, define uh, the uh, you know variance and uh, you can have uh, this further defined as uh, expected value. So, it will be a summation of uh, x minus mu whole square and p x. So, as you know that once we try to get the expected value you are finding the sum of uh, the, the every entity multiplied by the uh, p x. So, this way we find the you know uh, variance and that, that talks about the variability of the data from its mean. So, basically you are getting the uh, you know variation from the mean and you are squaring it. So, that is known as the uh, variance and it is also defined as uh, expected value of x square minus uh, expected value of x and its square. So, this is also uh, uh, we can find these uh, uh, you know variance as uh, we can find from this uh, formula that is uh, E x square. Uh, so, this will be the expected value of the x square term. So, if you have the values of x once you have the values of x you will find its square and uh, then uh, the, this is the E x that is uh, the, the mean and then that mean term will be squared and its difference it will be talking about uh, the the, the, the variance of uh, that uh, particular data. Now, uh, we can have uh, uh, we, we can we will solve uh, we can solve in uh, the uh, coming lectures we can solve the problems based on these and uh, we can see that how uh, the problems based on uh, certain such kind of uh, uh, formulas are solved. Now, the thing is that when we talk about the uh, uh, random random uh, variable. Now, uh, uh, the variance uh, of the data is either in the context of the you know, population or you know in its sample and population context. So, it may be for the sample. So, then when it is for a particular sample then we talk about sample variance and if you are uh, talking about the population whole population then we call it as the uh, population variance. And uh, when we talk about the uh, sample variance, then we represent it terms of S square. So, this is known as uh, S is sample variance that is uh, you know uh, S square is sample variance. And uh, uh, for a uh, particular sample when we calculate the sample variance, in that case uh, we calculate from i equal to 1 to n and we calculate x i minus x prime bar square and uh, that is divided by n minus 1. So, this is how we calculate this uh, uh, sample variance and uh, in this case uh, x uh, bar is the sample mean. So, if you have depending upon the sample size 
we calculate this uh, uh, sample mean and uh, n is basically the sample size. And uh, when we talk about the entire population then we talk as population variance otherwise it is the you know uh, you know it is known as the sample variance. Now, when we talk about the entire population in, in that case uh, we call it as population variance and that is uh, defined as uh, summation i equal to 1 to n and then x i uh, minus mu and, and that square divided by n. So, that basically normally uh, we talk when we uh, deal with the uh, uh, population variance or so. So, these are the uh, different uh, you know uh, formulas which are uh, used for now in this case the capital N is the population size and mu is the population mean. So, this is mu is uh, population mean and this is uh, known as the population size. So, that way uh, we calculate these uh, uh, you know sample mean, sample variance or population mean, population variance. Now, another uh, you know very important uh, parameter which is uh, uh, required to be understood is the you know uh, standard deviation which is an important parameter. So, uh, the standard deviation basically uh, when we talk, so this is basically talking about this dispersion from the mean. So, and standard deviation is uh, calculated by finding the square root of the uh, variance and uh, uh, larger will be the value of the standard deviation. So, larger will be the dispersion in the uh, data and uh, higher will be the variability of uh, I mean uh, from the mean. So, that is how the concept is and standard deviation is uh, represented by a sigma and this is nothing but this uh, the square of the, the square root of the uh, variance. So, we know the formula of the variance. So, you will have a summation of x minus uh, uh, mu square into p x i p x. So, that way you can uh, find uh, these uh, uh, values of the standard deviation. You can have uh, many formulas and uh, you will also have formula like uh, square root of uh, summation of uh, i equal to 1 to n then you have x i minus mu then a square and this is divided by n and then it is a square root. So, that also is another formula by which uh, you can find the uh, standard deviation. You can have uh, standard deviation for the sample also and when we try to find the standard deviation for the sample. So, again it will be square and as we know that it is its uh, formula is different you use the term n minus 1 and in that case what you do is you have a square root of uh, summation i equal to 1 to n and here x i minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 and then you uh, uh, get the square root. So, when we talk about the sample uh, you know standard deviation. So, you get uh, this formula and once you get the variance you can calculate that standard deviation and uh, you, uh, you, you, you use them. Uh, the uh, further uh, there are other term parameters which are uh, of importance one of that parameter is the covariance. Now, covariance uh, is basically between two variables uh, between x and y and it will be represented as cov x y. So, if you have two random variables cov uh, x and y, so what is the covariance? Covariance uh, between x and y uh, is basically defined as this expected value of uh, you know uh, x uh, minus mu x and into uh, you know y minus mu y. So, this is uh, basically known as the covariance uh, you know and uh, if the covariance value is uh, more than 0 then it means the two variables are going in the same direction if it is less than 0 then they are going in the opposite direction and if they are, are they are basically uh, equal to 0 then they are not uh, you know linearly related that is what the meaning of the uh, covariance uh, term is. And uh, 
Uh, there is another uh, you know uh, parameter uh, you, which is normally used uh, which is of importance is when this covariance is uh, divided uh, you know uh, there is a term known as uh, correlation and uh, this uh, correlation is uh, uh, the measure of the uh, you know uh, linear relationship. So, you know, this uh, correlationship is uh, further defined and uh, it will be uh, the correlation between the two random variables. So, how they are correlated. Now, in, the, in that case what we do is that uh, uh, correlation value will be varying from minus 1 to plus 1. So, uh, what is done in the case of uh, you know correlation is that uh, uh, you uh, divide uh, this uh, covariance uh, with uh, one quantity which uh, will basically be uh, uh, giving that to be in, in the range of uh, minus 1 to uh, uh, plus 1 and uh, if the correlation is uh, you know uh, from towards minus 1 if the minus 1 is value of the correlation it means they are very much you know uh, negatively correlated and, and if it is uh, plus 1 then they are positively correlated and if it is 0 then they are uh, 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 not correlated. So, that is how uh, these uh, you know uh, uh, correlation is uh, defined and what is done is that uh, uh, you know uh, here you try to divide it with the standard deviations sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, covariance value uh, divided by uh, you know uh, uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, that gives you this uh, correlation coefficient. So, now, this value if it is uh, so correlation coefficient if it is uh, you know uh, coming out to be minus 1 then it is uh, uh, strongly negatively correlated. Means if one is increasing another is decreasing if one is largely increasing another is largely decreasing like that. And if it is plus 1 means uh, it is uh, strongly positively correlated. So, that way one will be increasing another will also be increasing. So, that is positively correlated and if it is 0 it is uncorrelated independent. So, this is uh, how. So, if you have the data given you can calculate these uh, value of covariance and then further define it. Uh, divided by the product of the standard deviations of that uh, to you know random variable uh, and then you can uh, find this correlation uh, value and you can say that one is uh, how they are correlated. So, these are the statistical measures or terms which are used going to be used for our studies. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.